Hey guys, it's Ocean Breezer 325 here. I hope you guys had a wonderful weekend. But here we are on Sleeping Giant. We are taking out the King George. So some interesting facts about the King George. The battleship is actually classified in the British Royal Navy as a battle cruiser due to her modest guns but higher than average speed on the ship. And also the reason why I decided to HE spam, most people in most videos will tell you that AP is a lot better on battleships than HE. But that's actually counterintuitive with British battleships, especially the King George, as the King George has a higher than average chance to set a fire and also good HE penetration, which is some pretty interesting characteristics of the German ship and the King George. Because the King George and the British entire line actually has one-fourth penetration with their HE. So the difference between armor piercing and high explosives is that armor piercing penetrates the armor without exploding or chance of causing fire while high explosive penetrates on impact or explodes on impact sorry and has a chance to cause fires that deal damage over time and the only way to put them out is by using your damage control. So immediately here our goal is to get around this island to A as Sleeping Giant is one of my favorite maps because if I spawn by A I don't know I just like it. And this is right now I'm just checking the map to exactly see what's happening. And right there you see the penetration capabilities. Two penetrations on a decently angled Kiryov dealing 4000 damage is not that bad and later on you'll see that Kirov get absolutely wrecked with my HE. So the build with the King George I have, I actually have a secondary build with this King George, surprisingly. The King George is one of the better secondary, has the better secondary armament than most British ships, so I do have a secondary build with 6 kilometers with my secondaries, which is higher than average, and Without upgrading your Gnize now to a full secondary build, the uh, the King George can do pretty decently well against the Gnize now secondary secondary battle. So anyway, this Hatsuharu is capturing A, so you know our team is gonna make around this island. I don't know why I like Sleeping Giant. You know, most people don't like capturing A because it's just such a nuisance to go all the way around an island or push straight ahead in the middle of the map which is it's, it's a poor tactic but I do use the King George a lot like that she can do stuff like the Rizalu can meaning you can kind of sit in the middle of the map make sure you're not getting crossfired and you're battle tanking your enemy and you can definitely cause massive fires with this thing and, and cause some pretty heavy damage against light cruisers with HE and the only real reason why you would switch to AP is because there's a battleship at least 5 kilometers away that you can easily sit it out. And I do mean easily. These guns turn well and they have good armor piercing capabilities. I think the King George is one of the more underrated battleships in the game. Um, for a little bit, as you unlock and get the ship, it's going to take a little while to get used to. But uh, once you understand the gameplay and she's more of a back and forward ship and bow tanking ship than she is broadside like the queen or war spite this ship is pretty usable and can uh, come out on top on a lot of 1v1s and also the uh, another reason why having HE loaded is pretty important in battleships is that now you don't have the fear of switching to armor piercing when you need that HE against destroyers and the reason why HE is better on destroyers is that HE arms on impact which means that no matter how thick or small the, ar the armor is you're gonna deal full penetrations and you have a chance of causing fire while well, armor piercing shells arm after you hit after you penetrate a certain amount of armor they will arm so if you hit the citadel of a sh or in order to hit the citadel of a ship your armor capabilities at those ranges you're shooting must exceed that of the armor that sounds a little confusing, because it is, but 
that's basically the most simplified turn. If your AP shells, like in that Dallas, can pen through the thicker side armor and explode in the citadel, then you get a citadel. If they're if it's too much armor piercing capabilities, which is why they go through the destroyer and do minimal damage and cause minor flooding, then it's not going to do its full damage and it'll only do 10% of its damage. Obviously, shooting a destroyer of AP is not the worst. You can still get pretty good damage out of it. As long as you're firing at a destroyer, which is often my complaint with my teammates. They don't fire on destroyers when they're flat broadside 5 kilometers away and you get torped. But HE is primarily used for that reason, anti-destroyer gameplay. So anyway, recap A, and we're gonna go ahead out. We're gonna go capture B here. And, um, this is kind of like the boring part, because I'm currently AFK. I went to go do something right quick, and I came back, because I was not expecting this game to be as good as it was. But, this game came out pretty good. So, yeah, I do recommend the King George secondary build as... If you have Cunningham, your accuracy is still a lot, is still pretty decent. You don't need the aiming system on, and your secondary build would help a lot. So there's an Atlanta who fires and doesn't cause a fire yet, but this shot does. And we're on fire, and this is when I come running up the stairs, as most of you guys know. We have finally moved into our house, so that is wonderful. So you guys should be seeing more content and actually more live streams. As I did my first live stream this weekend on YouTube, I'm going to do another one that's much longer and going through many games uh, today around 12-ish one. And there you see the power of the HE against light cruisers. That Kuryov got citadeled by my HE, which is almost impossible to do on the French and Americans HE, depending what ship you use, because I know the California also has the 1 4th quarter penetration. And there you go, we also take out the Atlanta's guns with the HE. This, this Atlanta has no idea what he's doing, or has no idea what's happening to him, as he's just getting absolutely clobbered with HE. And I'm also happy to report for ranked battles that I'm at tier 10. Or, yes, tier 10, so that is also going great. So everything has been going great on this game. Um, unfortunately, I think this will be the last week I cover content on this game. As next week, I'm going to try and diverse my gameplay here a little bit. So we'll see what games I choose. Um, if you guys stop by on the stream, you guys can... I'll give you guys the options and see what you guys want to see from me. So anyway, this Atlanta decides that, you know, it's maybe time to commit suicide. So he commits suicide. And then we don't kill him and... This is also another thing I complain about, RNG, and RNG is just like the random chance in this game. Uh, streamers and most YouTubers call it RNG, but uh, I hit him for two penetrations, yet I deal no damage but take out his engines. How does that make sense? Although there is there's a, there's a lot of complex things in this game such as the blackening of ships you can only take away so much HP from a section of the ship such as the superstructure the bow the aft and the center of the ship which you can also use to your advantage as American ships and German ships have a higher than average HP in their superstructures as their bows just ricochet so many shells it would literally be impossible to kill a Bismarck or Tirpitz that is showing his bow. It would literally, hypothetically, be impossible. But of course, you know, not all Bismarck players are like that. In fact, it's almost a dumb thing to do that in a Bismarck, especially considering her guns are only 380 millimeters, which is awfully overlooked. And people say that the HMS Vanguard, the Tier 7 battleship, has the smallest caliber. That is not true. The Bismarck does at 380 millimeters. But it is a lot better because of her turtle back armor and also her secondaries are literally it's insane. They light up the entire sky. So the Bismarck is definitely a good tier 7 ship. 
but often overlooked is the Vanguard. Honestly, often overlooked is the entire British battleship line. So if you guys are new to this game, I I'd say that the British battleship line is something that's pretty usable, even though most people are going to tell you that all the whole line is horrible. It really isn't. It's just their, their, the way they play is not catered towards the British battleship line. The British battleship line is more of using your bows and I guess involves a little bit more skill. So if you're coming from World of Warships, PC or Blitz, then and you have a lot of experience in that, and you play British battleships, they're the same thing. You just gotta make sure you're not giving dumb angles, not showing too much broadside, and just you know make sure you're you're utilizing that quarter penetration and higher than average chance to set fire with the British HE. And you see there that Akazuki was full health. And HE absolutely obliterated him. If we had an AP right there, he would have survived and launched torpedoes at us. Which is also another thing that I'm going to talk about in my next video. That you do not have to bonsai charge in a destroyer to win a game. So anyway, that's going to wrap up this video. I have my Cunningham build at the end of the video, as always. And we finally get some milestones on the Azuma campaign, which... I'm not going to think I'm going to finish. But anyway, thank you guys for riding the waves of Ocean Breezer. See you later on in my stream.